Hello friends, let us learn about trochanteric fractures. Trochanteric fractures are the most common lower limb fracture in the elderly. It is estimated that one third of all women and one sixth of all men will encounter a hip fracture, half of which are trochanteric fractures. These injuries have a bimodal distribution. In the elderly, it is often the result of a domestic fall, whereas in young population, it is usually due to a high velocity injury, that is road traffic accident. How do we define a trochanteric region? If this is the model of a proximal femur, this is the intertrochanteric ring to which the capsule is attached and this is the horizontal line from the inferior border of the lesser tuberosity. The entire region in between is considered trochanteric region. Any fracture in this region is considered a trochanteric fracture. Question often asked is how to decide which treatment option to be undertaken in which subset of the fractures. The decision making is dependent on two parameters. One is the fracture pattern, the second being the patient profile. Talking of the fracture pattern, we have the fracture geometry in which we need to decide whether a particular pattern is stable or unstable and then we have the fracture extent whether the fracture is extending onto the lateral wall whether or not there is dorsomedial medial combination and whether the fracture is extending into the subtrochanteric region question which most often confuses all of us is what is stable and what is an unstable fracture? Is there any valid definition of stability? Stability can be defined as the ability of a fracture to support physiological loading. So the fracture stability is not related not only to the number of fragments, but it is also dependent on the fracture plane. To give an example, a simple transverse reverse oblique fracture is considered unstable although there is no comminution. Thus, by the fact that the plane of the fracture is in a different orientation, it is still an unstable fracture. If we have a look at the AO classification, it is told that these four pattern of injuries are stable whereas these four five injury patterns are unstable but is this true in current day orthopedics is the question to give an example here we have a simple intertrochanteric fracture a 3-1-a-1 fracture in a 52 year old individual in whom a dhs plate is done with a good reduction and fixation but this goes on to failure in femur. Why did this happen? If 3-1-A-1 is a stable fracture, then DHS should have been the implant of choice for these injuries. Then why did it fail? So is there something more? So the original AO classification, what it addresses is, it takes into consideration postromedial combination, takes into consideration the reverse oblique fact pattern and it considers extension into subtrochanteric region deeming all these as unstable fractures. But strangely the older AO classification does not address the lateral wall integrity as well as the coronal fractures. Hence to overcome all these deficiencies AO in 2018 proposed a refined classification system which considered all these 31A1.1 is an isolated fracture of the greater trochanter or the lesser trochanter 31A1.2 is a two part fracture which means a single fracture line and 31A1.3 means one fracture line 
plus a separate lesser trochanter fracture. In A2, we do not have an A2.1, and A2.2 is one fracture line and one intermediate fragment. In A2.3, we have two or more intermediate fragments. A3 is a reverse oblique fracture, three variants. A3.1 is a simple oblique fracture. A3.2 is a transverse fracture. A3.3 is a wedge or a multi-fragmentary reverse oblique fracture. What we realize is now the concept of lateral wall fractures is included in the newer classification system. What is a lateral wall? If we take the innominate tubercle of the greater trochanter and mark a point 3 cm below the innominate tubercle, from this point, we need to measure the thickness up to the fractured area. If the thickness of this amount of bone is less than 20.5 millimeter, then it is considered that it is a lateral wall fracture. It is an insufficient lateral wall. Why is this concept important? Look at this example. If we classify this injury as per the older AO classification, it will be considered a stable fracture pattern. And if a DHS is done in such a scenario, the DHS might fail because of the lateral wall fracture which occurred hydrogenically. What is the rationale? The rationale is an ideal intertrochantric fracture should run in the intertrochantric ridge area. But if the fracture line is lateralized, then the remaining part of the lateral wall is insufficient. Because if we do a DHS in these patients, then we need to ream this with 18 millimeter of reamer, which might cause iotrogenic splintering into the already thin flimsy lateral wall leading on to its failure. My dear friends, what we learned is with respect to decision making, if the patient is young and it is a stable fracture, we could think of any surface implants like a DHS or an angle blade plate. If the patient is young, a stable fracture, but the canal is narrow, then we would be left with an option of proximal femur LCP. If the patient is elderly and the, any fracture pattern, arthroplasty should be considered so that these patients can be mobilized early. Whereas in any other patient with any other fracture pattern, as long as the size of the canal is good, cephalomedullar nail could be considered. So in this presentation, what we learned is that the newer AO classification is good and important because it considers the lateral wall integrity. This concept is very important from treatment perspective. In all stable fractures, any surface implant like DHS is as good as a cephalomedullary nail. If it is an unstable fracture, a cephalomedullary nail will perform better. Reduction and positioning of the implant is most crucial from a surgeon's point of view. And please do not forget the treatment of osteoporosis in these patients to help them heal this current fracture as well as prevent future falls. Thank you.